have been doing amazing work on Macedonia. North Thank you. Macedonia. Or is it South? Or is it, or, or is it the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia? Okay, right. so um, there is something of a counter-revolution at hand um, in Macedonia, or North Macedonia, or Phyrom, um, as, as we shall see. Its name is contentious, a uh, contentious issue. So <clears throat> on May 8th, um, the anti-NATO, anti-EU party, VMRO, DPMNE, um, I shall refer to them as VMRO um, th hereafter, they scored a very clear, if not landslide victory in both presidential and parliamentary elections. Uh, Gordana uh, Siljanovska Davkova is now Macedonia's very first female president. She resoundingly beat the pro-Western incumbent Stavo Pandorovsky of the ruling Social Democrats. Um, Pandorovsky is a, a darling of EU and US officials. Um, he won in what was regarded as a bit of an upset in 2019. And this was hailed in the West, Western media as uh, a demonstration of, of Macedonians yearning to at last become members of the transatlantic community and rejection of VMRO's uh, anti-Western um, politics. They're not particularly anti-Western, but they did oppose uh, the country joining both the EU and NATO. So therefore, they are evil pro-Russian pawns. Um, and so, uh, in effect... His presidency removed the last remaining barrier to Macedonia joining um, NATO, which was opposed by a significant proportion of the local population um, uh, for a variety of reasons. And it, the process by which the country entered NATO was, was very protracted and bitter and controversial. But um, it, it, in effect, this is a huge blow to to NATO um, and and the EU and and the US Empire as well. Um, I have been to Macedonia many times. I I urge uh, viewers to, to travel themselves. It's a very beautiful country, amazing food, really nice people. Um, but they it, it for it it was formerly a component of Yugoslavia, and a republic uh, thereof. And after 1991, when Yugoslavia disintegrated due to US meddling, um, it, uh, its name suddenly became deeply controversial because, of course, Greece, there is a territory, well, it's actually part of modern day Bulgaria, but uh, the, the, the Greece claims the name and the term Macedonia as part of its an antiquity. This is where Alexander the Great hailed from. And so when Macedonia became a independent quote unquote country, um, suddenly Athens was rather worried that Macedonia would make claims on its own territory and would seek to, um, what's the word? appropriate um, the name for itself, um, therefore undermining its history and, um, uh, it, it, um, funnily enough, a lot of its uh, kind of tourism pull. So th Greece struck a deal with Macedonia whereby it, they, um, when Macedonia joined the UN, say, it would be called Phyrum, so the former Yugoslav Republic of, of Macedonia. That would be its its formal name. Um, fast forward to 2008, and Greece outright blocked Macedonia joining the bloc um, on the basis of its name, and they suggested that you rename your they suggested you will rename yourselves New Macedonia or Upper Macedonia. Um, it has to, the name has to be changed. Um, this was opposed by something like 80 plus percent of the public. Um, people residing in Macedon Macedonia have referred to themselves as Macedonians for centuries, um, and that the, the it, it has been the uh, the territory has been known under that name um, since the creation of, of Yugoslavia. So um, it, it, this presented a very real problem uh, for a very long time. VMRO were in power and they were opposed to joining the EU and NATO. So of course, um, from their perspective, uh, they, were, they, they were never going to change their name um, and um, uh, th there was yes a significant proportion of the public who um, took that view as well um, post kind of Maidan and post um, the reunification of uh, Crimea with Russia um, NATO started quite aggressively pushing for expansion in the former Yugoslavia because they understood that there was probably a limited amount of time before Russia responded to this um, in one way or another. So um, they st started aggressively pushing for Macedonia to join um, NATO. Um, in 2015, 
the, the Social Democrats, uh, the opposition at the time, um, they started uh, releasing kind of bombshell audio recordings, which seemed to to indicate that the ruling party was involved in a, a, a wide variety of crimes and misdeeds and, and abuse of power. Um, there are some suggestions that this material was handed to them by the CIA and MI6, um, because that's what they do. Um, but, 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 but I mean, this created a political crisis. Um, which in 2017 led to the election of the Social Democrats. And so since then, it, the country has basically been ruled by ve very pro-Western mm -hmm. puppets, yeah. basically. So this, and there was all sorts, in order to get into NATO, um, there was all sorts of skullduggery where they, they bribed um, MPs, they blackmailed, blackmailed others, and they had a, a kind of sham referendum, yeah. which under the terms of... Um, uh, Macedonia's constitution um, was basically illegal, um, wh whereby people would vote on the new name. Now, 94% voted in favour, although the turnout was absolutely tiny. Sure. So yeah. it was illegitimate, but they went ahead with it anyway. And there were that huge. That was about 2017. Yeah, yeah. And there were these huge street protests um, under the banner of Never North, Always Macedonia. Um, and uh, it, 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 the adoption of, of, of this new name is a major sticking point for a lot of the public. Um, but I mean, interesting, I hear from sources on the ground there, um, including um, opposition journalists, that <clears throat> in effect, once Macedonia was kind of shunted into NATO, which occurred, formally the accession occurred in, in, in March 2020, the US stopped paying attention um, as did Britain, um, which we'll get into in a moment. But in effect, since then, it's kind of been, well, you're in now, so we're just going mm -hmm. to leave you be. Um, we made and, a mess and we're going to sweep it under the rug. Yeah, but, but also as well, it's like they got what they want, ultimately sure. wanted. So like uh, once that's achieved, because I mean, contrary to NATO's public claims that countries are free to choose their own security arrangements, you know, actually, um, once you're in NATO, it is very, very difficult to leave and there will be consequences if you even attempt it. Um, yeah. this, is, this is exactly what happened in Montenegro, which um, I've written about this, but uh, in 2016, there was a allegedly failed coup um, where the government claimed that a team of Russian intelligence operatives, along with the, the pro-Russian, pro-Serb opposition, um, had attempted to, were seeking to overthrow the government. And um, this, uh, this was a stage-managed false flag that was always intended to fail while discrediting the pro-Russian opposition. Um, and then the second that Montenegro was or, uh, was forced into NATO despite 80% of the public opposing it, um, then they just decided to leave it alone. Um, because, you know, like job done, etc. But the, I mean, the, the, the election of um, Gordana um, is a really, it couldn't have come at a worse time from yeah. NATO's perspective because, um, I mean, we've had the election of Robert Fico in Slovakia, who is openly anti-war, anti anti-sanctions, uh, and, and indeed anti-NATO. So one by one, like dominoes, um, these countries are, are falling. Um, it sounds like West Africa. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Which and we'll and just think, later, just but. really quickly, like if you could draw this up. So for for several years, um, Britain's ambassador to Macedonia was an individual called Charles Garrett. Um, I've heard from a number of sources um, on the ground that I mean, so in in as part of this kind of color revolution that the West foisted on Macedonia in 2016, 2017 which was tied in with the release of those audio intercepts, um, there was a large number of civil society organisations and NGOs that were allegedly anti-corruption, pro-democracy, etc. I have heard that Charles Garrett, the uh, British ambassador, was was going from office to office in Skopje, the, the capital of uh, Macedonia, and handing out cash from his diplomatic pouch, yeah. um, which is, you know, this is how diplomats carry things, and they're not, you're not allowed to go into it. No. <laughs> like, yeah, you're not it allowed to, immunity. yeah, 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 it has immunity. And I mean, this was one of the ways that uh, the Ecuadorian intelligence services were thinking of getting Assange right. out of the embassy that they were going to put him in a diplomatic bag and just smuggle him out that way. Um, so uh, sadly, it never came to pass. And now he is, um, it, it's, I think he's been in, for, it's five years now, isn't it, um, that he's been in Belmarsh, poor, right. poor Julian. But, but, but yeah, so in effect, um, Charles Garrett was handing out 
cash to all of these organizations that uh, were subsequently involved in the uh, the color revolution and then another component of the color revolution was there was and if you could bring up the BBC article now there's an individual called uh, Katica Yeneva um, and so she was built the real up crime fighting yeah, no 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 I mean this is this is like it, it is beautiful so I mean yeah if you could just kind of scroll down this very slowly right so uh, Katika uh, was um, a prosecutor and um, she became a very prominent figure within Macedonia's color revolution and she uh, her she was framed in the Western media as the face of the new Macedonia and so she was uh, uh, tasked with investigating all of the corruption and criminality that was exposed via the release of these wiretaps um, and again this is almost certainly passed on to uh, the opposition by the CIA and MI6. I mean, where else did they get it? Um, and so uh, she, yes, there are all of these fawning profiles in the Western media and this BBC article refers to her and her two uh, subordinates as, as Charlie's angels, like you know, these, these real life crime fighters. Um, uh, fast forward a bit and she ended up in jail for corruption, um, like, very, like rather amusingly because she was taking bribes and bungs to uh, for selective prosecutions, leaving certain people alone and pursuing other individuals. Now, um, if you the uh, if we could draw up the photo of her with um, with Mr. Charles Barrett. Yeah, I got it up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty fucking hilarious, isn't it? Um, so this is the the guy on the the right of the picture is uh, is Charles is is Charles Garrett, um, rather skeletal. Uh, kooky looking figure but don't underestimate him um, and he wrote an, he wrote an article for the, the British government's uh, website where he effectively stated that his job in in Macedonia was to get um, the country into NATO um, and he succeeded in that um, subsequent to this he became the British ambassador to Kyrgyzstan and almost immediately after taking the post there was a coup in, uh, so this the rather yeah rather does seem to, to follow Mr. Garrett around um, I'm, I'm sure it's just a, a, a spooky coincidence I, I'm yes in, in the um, uh, Parliament written evidence that I've included in the document. He talks about watching the the coup in Kyrgyzstan firsthand. Um, and again, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 questions can only be asked about why. Yes, why uh, wherever he goes, governments tend to get destabilized. Uh, there are some local media reporting in Macedonia about how he. Um, uh, was on the board of an alleged charitable organization which was seeking investment for the creation of new housing in Macedonia and it of course this would have netted him a lot of money so he had a personal stake in uh, corrupt dealings um, and quote-unquote democratization in um, in post-socialist Macedonia. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.